Hey, we have some outstanding news from Netflix this week. You can now get streaming in HD on the Mac and the PC. Yes. About time. It's not just for set-top boxes and consoles anymore. Nope. And, hey, we actually have it running in the oh, background wow. right now. And I have to say, I was running this on my workstation at home. Pretty powerful system using the Chrome uh, browser. No problems whatsoever. Streaming came up right away. However, when I switched over to my energy-efficient uh, home, um, home theater PC, which is running on Atom Ion hardware, efficient, not the most powerful stuff, I found that some of these HD streams were pretty much choking that poor system. Now, Dare I hit the full screen button? Oh, no. Go right ahead. It should be fine. Now, it, this takes a couple of seconds usually to get going, and then it starts streaming really well. I will say, for whatever reason, the Lost episodes, which we're watching here right now, were the only ones that streamed even relatively well on this hardware. Huh. Now, this is using Silverlight technology from Microsoft to do the, uh, basically the delivery of this video. And currently with Silverlight, there is no hardware acceleration for the decode of the video. Hence, I'm not being able to take advantage of the graphics hardware that I have. Sometimes this happens, but generally, generally I'm going to say that at least with the Lost episodes, I was getting a good quality, clean stream on relatively weak hardware. Now, if you have a computer made in this century, well, not this century, but in this, I will say in the last couple of years, any modern computer with decent, decent graphics and CPU is gonna be able to handle streaming this content just easily. Prerequisites are, though, that you have to install Silverlight. You do have to have the, uh, a plan from Netflix that provides streaming of video. And apparently, you only get streaming of Netflix content if you're actually living in the continental United States, unfortunately. I had somebody from Puerto Rico going, you know, we have Netflix in Puerto Rico, but we'd, we're not allowed to stream content there. I, <laughs> I think that's totally unfair, but... That's a bummer. But I will say, uh, given the hiccups you're seeing, this is, remember again, this is, could be due to any number of reasons. I basically ripped this out of my home theater at home and brought it in. Uh, yeah, our, our network here in, in the studio <laughs> so. is notorious for destroying even the most robust of services. <laughs> Maybe see if I can keep on. So did, are yeah. pretty much all the videos that showed up in the PC HD section, is that what it is, like the PC HD section? You know, or? that's something I am trying to figure out because there are far more HD videos. Here, let me go back to browsing real quick. There is a large library of HD videos that you're able to stream from Netflix, mm -hmm. but when you click on the PC Mac button, here, let me go to genres real quick, uh, HD, boop. It seems like there are a lot more show all HD, but then you have a separate button for show HD for Mac and PC. I think those are the Silverlight delivered videos. I'm just guessing at that one point. They're probably in the process of re-encoding all of their HD titles to be compatible with the Silverlight system. And I gotta say, overall quality, they look phenomenal. It's about a four megabit stream, a variable, but uh, terrific. This is over 600 titles right now, close to 700 currently. Cool. In this particular section, uh, and I have to say, except for <laughs> Silverlight not supporting hardware, so hardware video decoding. Until that kicks in, it's, I would recommend this only for people with uh, slightly more powerful systems or notebooks. What a lot of people have been saying online, I guess some tweets about this, is that the Silverlight hardware acceleration has to be turned on by the content provider, Ooh. not necessarily the people building the application, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but we will continue to investigate. Silverlight team, though, did demonstrate at NAB a couple months ago in mm -hmm. Vegas a running demo on Atom Ion hardware doing H.264 decoding. So I imagine in a future update, hopefully soon, to we'll see that, we'll see that performance. Dream. Smooth streaming performance. We were expecting Google and Intel to announce new smart TV. Smart TV, I like to say that at Google I.O. this week. Think Dragon Point, low-end power processor, and, and Android, duh. But the big news so far is that Google, Mozilla, and Opera have banded together to support WebM. That's a new royalty-free video codec from, hey, we told you, on to the makers of the VP8 codec that Google purchased recently. Not the codec, the whole company. It's kind of the last piece of the pie for HTML5 video, if you don't want to pay royalties for H.264, that is. Mozilla and Opera promise to support the codec in their browsers, and of course YouTube will support it, because Google owns YouTube, and Microsoft chipped in and said WebM will definitely be supported in IE9. It's coming in 2011. Expect drama to ensue, mostly like H.264 proponents saying we should stay with H.264. Is this truly open? Is it going to lead to lawsuits? Is it different enough from H.264 to prevent MPEG LA? That's the people that run the MPEG patent consortium that people pay money to distribute content. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, but all questions to be answered. But this is possibly a free codec with no potential because the, the, at some point we got to start paying for MPEG 4, and that could be a pretty hefty payment. Yep. When the time As we comes. spread it out. Yes. Is Walmart the new Best Buy? Probably not just yet, but the <laughs> Mega Chain has announced that it will be expanding its space for Blu ray players and movies. 50% more floor space in 1,200 stores nationwide, according to tvpredictions.com. 
and returning the $78 Magnavox Blu-ray players to the shelves. It keeps coming back. Dang, $78? $78. They've got a new low price leader now. A 65%. Oh, I'm telling you, Blu-rays and 7-Eleven. Check and see if there's a firmware update for that thing, though. Yeah. Speaking of firmware <laughs> update, Time Warner says they won't comply with Hurt Locker's lawsuit, not because they have a problem with suing people, but because of the thousands of requests the lawyers are making would tie up the cable company's four-person IP lookup staff. Is that the name of that? For months. Like It would be like literally for the first round of hits they want it would take like four months full time of these people working so yeah it's it's going to be yeah there are better ways to spend that money <laughs> there really are <laughs> it's another time warner yeah. <laughs> in other legal ish news the fcc quote granted a granted a limited authority to cable and satellite services that allow them to selectively disable ports on your set top box our buddy alfred poor over at hdtvmagazine.com has the full story Think the return of selectable output control? Hmm. Which is a fancy way of saying that the MPAA wants to kill off the analog loophole in your TV box. The FCC didn't give the MPAA everything they wanted. you got to check the article for all the details. Yeah, there's all sorts of little slidey, slickery things I, in there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too crazy about this one because the right. last thing a cable or satellite provider wants to do is suddenly get a flurry of phone calls, <laughs> service support calls, going, why, why did my component output stop? Right. Or, and they're not turning off HDMI. Just right. a hint right there. So if you're using that already. Not yet, man. I, I, not yet. I think for most people, you're not going to notice a whole lot here. It's yeah. really just a, I don't know, who knows. We'll find out. <laughs> DirecTV is launched their whole home DVR for 3 bucks per month. Your DirecTV DVR will be able to serve video to other HD receivers in your home. Okay, it's a little bit more than 3 bucks a month because you'll be paying for the HD receivers for all the sets in your home. But apparently, it'll handle up to 15 different receivers. I don't know if it'll stream to all of them at once, but you basically have the basic DVR, and then it'll spit its contents all around nice. the house. It sounds similar to what Moxie was doing with their DVR set-top mm -hmm. boxes, essentially using that main DVR to allow yeah. you to collect the content, and then you can spit that off to all the little satellite boxes around the house, too. Good for users, though. <laughs> On the uh, gaming front, Rockstar, one of my favorite companies, has just launched Red Dead Redemption. Rumor has it that it is only... 640p resolution on the PlayStation 3, while the Xbox 360 rolls up with full 720p video. So, while this isn't a huge difference, especially on smaller screens, you probably won't even notice the visual difference. So, essentially what you're getting on the PS3 is 1152 by 640, while they're estimating that on the Xbox you're getting the full 1280 by 720 or 720p resolution. I, will you see the difference? I think you would on a large 1080p screen running your latest and greatest game consoles, but you know, I wouldn't, uh, I'm not sweating over a few pixels, especially on the smaller screen sizes. But, but if I had both consoles and I had to choose, I'm going to go for the higher resolution one anyway. And this is running <laughs> on the uh, Xbox 360, I believe. Yes. Yep. And I got to say, my friends are already out playing multiplayer on this. I'm, I'm tempted. I don't own a 360, so. Maybe it's time. I, or I'm just going to go over to my friend's house with the disc and then they'll stop what they're doing and let me play. So, good luck with that. <laughs>